when I was building my wood-fired heaters, I used a lot of this stuff in the construction. This is a ceramic fiber board. It's a high temperature insulation board. And I put this stuff around the burn chambers to insulate and confine the fire to get it up to a high temperature so I can get a good clean burn. And recently, when I was looking at the price of these, the prices have doubled since when I bought this stuff. I bought this stuff about six years ago, and I was buying it in two foot by three foot sheets, and I could buy it in two inches thick or one inch thick. And right now, a sheet of this two inch stuff, two foot by three foot, is close to $200, and the one inch stuff is about $100. So those prices are getting kind of frightening and I think it's out of the reach of a lot of do-it-yourselfers who want to make an insulated burn chamber so you get a good clean burn on these rocket stoves and like my masonry and heater. So today I'm going to try to come up with an alternative to this that will serve the same purpose and be inexpensive. And what I had in mind was a mixture of refractory cement and perlite. I also use this stuff in those uh, builds too. This is a castable refractory cement. It comes in a bucket. And it's just a powder and you mix it with water and you can make any size fire brick you want, any thickness or size you want. And this is one right here that I made for my first rocket stove. This is a cover and it gets, it gets hard like a rock. And it, it works pretty good, but it doesn't have any insulation properties to it. So I, that isn't going to work by itself. But one other thing that I used was perlite in those builds. And this is that expanded volcanic rock. You can get this from your garden center. You know, it's pretty inexpensive. This amount right here is maybe about $5 worth. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to try to mix a whole bunch of this with just a little bit of this. So I got a form laid out here where I'm going to try a mixture. So I want to try a 20% mix and a 10% mix of this uh, refractory cement to see if they'll come up with a block that can go together pretty good. I did a 50-50 mixture of this stuff when I put the floor of this uh, rocket stove water heater and that worked pretty good. But now I'm going to try and do a mixture so we'll get more insulation using more of the perlite and less of the refractory cement. This is my 20% mixture. Kind of looks like a rice crispy bar mix. My idea was as long as I get all that perlite coated, I should get them to stick together when I put it in the form. And this is my 
10% mix. You can see it's a lighter color. I put plastic down here so I can get it apart later after it dries. I might have to mix some more of this up too. We'll see. Yeah, I'll have to mix up a little bit more. Cause I, I can pack this stuff down, it seems like. I don't know if that's good or bad, but... Yes. I suppose if it was, wasn't was packed down, be more insulation property to it. But mix some more of that up. So I get some more of that mixed up. Yeah, like making Rice Krispie bars. It's a little over a day later, but I can tell already that this 10% mixture isn't going to hold up. I can I can push my finger down into it. It's just not enough uh, binder material in there to hold it together. But this 20% I think might be all right. I'll take these forms off and we'll take a look at it then. Yeah, this 10% is just, it didn't hold together at all. Look at that. It's just mushed right apart. It looks like the perlite is coated, but there's not enough binder holding it together. It feels a little bit damp here. I'll take a look at this other one. Now this one looks like the Binder material settled down to the bottom. But no, that's still kind of soft. So I think I need a heavier mixture. I'd like to try like a 25% a or 30% even. I'm going to let this one set out and dry. You can see how that layered up like that. The binder stuff settled down. I'm going to let this set up and see if it gets any more strength. But that one's definitely not strong enough. This one is very questionable. And this was a 20%. I'll probably have to go try 25% or 30%, 3 to 1. I know 50-50 50, 50, 50 is strong enough but it doesn't have quite the insulation properties that I wanted that I was hoping for but I think maybe a 30% mixture or 25% will work so we'll see what that does these next samples I'm mixing dry first because I don't want them get them too wet and have all the binder material settle to the bottom so then I can just add water sparingly. This is right here is a 25% refractory cement mixture by volume. 75% perlite, 25% this castable refractory cement. And then I'll do a 30% and then I'll let them dry and see how they hold up. So this 25% mix looks pretty rich now, and it's not runny or anything. So I think that one's going to hold up pretty good. But I'm going to do a 30, well actually this one's going to be a 33% instead of 30% because it's going to be 
mixed three, uh, two to one. So it'll be two of these per light to one of the refractory cement. I think that first time I mixed them, I wasn't being accurate enough. So that's two per light. So one refractory cement, and that's by volume. This one was three of these little containers of perlite to one container of refractory cement. Then that actually looks pretty rich. I bet you that'll hold up. But I'm still going to go ahead and do a 33% a mix. And that's my 33% sample. I'm not sure what the contents are of this. I think it's made with fire clay. It's probably what it's made of. It doesn't say it's in beans, but when I mix it with this perlite, I can compress it down in there. I could keep pressing this down and it's compact. But I'll let these dry and then I'll take the forms out and I'll see what I have. So I let these samples set up for almost a day and they got very hard. It looks like they're very solid. So I'm going to take the forms off of here and see what we have. Staying together so far. This is the 33 percenter. Scratch it in there because they look. This one almost looks like it's denser than this one, but this is the 25 percent. Oh, it's like the all the binder didn't settle out. Some a little smoother here, but I don't know if that's just because it's on the plastic. <clears throat> but it's not layered like that other one was. It seems to be pretty structurally sound. And this is the 25% one. Well, it doesn't really look a whole lot different. A little bit of settling. This one seems to be structurally sound too. Both of these need to cure some more, so they're going to be setting out for a while so we get some air around them and they can actually dry out. They still feel a little bit damp. This one, I can feel this is heavier though than this one. This one's lighter. I can tell that. Looking again at this uh, 20 percent mixtured sample. I think this would have probably worked if the binder went to settled out. I think I mixed it too runny and it just it drained out to the bottom. But I think this one would have held together. So I might almost even try to do that one again. But I'm going to let these cure some more. And the next step I want to take with these samples is to apply this uh, ceramic coating. It's a 100 HT ceramic coating. This is an infrared reflector material and it's used for forges. It says it'll increase the efficiency of your forge by 50% because it reflects infrared heat. And this is just some ceramic coating that says you mix with water two parts of this with one part of water. 
but I'm gonna have to wait until these cure. These are pretty damp yet. So I'm gonna cut this video right here and I'll pick up in the next one after these have cured and I'll start applying this and then we'll do some testing on these to see how they hold up under heat. So thanks for watching.